Hi, I'm Avery Bablitz. I started getting my nails done back in 1994, and then I became a nail tech in 1997. In the year 2000, I became an instructor to teach my passion to other people. And then in 2010, I took my profession to the next level and founded Nail Innovations. Throughout these past 26 years, I have consistently had my nails done the entire time and never not had nails. So this idea of not being able to have nails done doesn't really sit well with me. And if you're watching this, my guess is that it doesn't sit well with you either. And so because I've had over two decades of experience in doing my own nails and teaching other people how to do nails, I wanted to share pertinent information with you on the best things that we can do to get our nails through to our next appointment. I want to start off by talking about nail structure. Ideally, when we have our nails done, we should have a nice, perfect arch to it. When you think of bridge structure, every bridge has a, a natural curve to it because that's what lends strength to it. And so if we look at the top of our nail and if we apply pressure on the tip of the nail, what's called the stress area in the middle of the nail turns white. That's essentially where the meat in our finger goes over the end of the bone. The bone ends there and then there's just tissue around that. But where that tissue, where that bone ends and that tissue folds over it, that causes a pressure point. And so ideally, the thickest part of our nail should be right over top of that stress area. And if we back this up, my full growth, then the thickest part of my nail would be over that stress area. But now because it's been two months, now the thinner part of my nail is into the stress area. And what that also does is it means that the heaviest part or the thickest part of my nail is now into the free edge and I'm creating extra leverage. So every time I push on the end of that nail, I'm risking popping this up in the back. The expression that we use to describe that is called tip heavy. The tip of the nail starts to become very heavy when we press on it and increases that leverage. So it's really important once the nail becomes tip heavy that we start shortening our nails back and reducing the amount of leverage on the nail bed and on the remaining gel on top of the nail. If we don't start to shorten that nail and reduce the amount of leverage on it, then as we're applying pressure to the ends of our fingers, we're going to start to get tiny little spots that lift and buckle because they just don't have the, the thick strength as they should in the center to handle that much pressure before it lifts or, or cracks. So before you start shortening, there's a few things that you want to have on hand. Obviously, a nail file, um, possibly a buffer, not a have to have, but might be something that you want to have on hand, as well as a towel. The um, amount of dust that you're going to create, it'll be advantageous to have a towel to catch that dust. As a professional nail tech, I have the Nail Innovations Professional built-in vent right in my nail desk. So depending on which hand you're filing, if you're shortening on your hard hand, so if you're right-handed, then shortening your right hand might be harder. So you may not want to move the file, you may just want to move your finger. That's one little tip. Um, also pay attention to the grit. We recommend a file one side has, it's very, very smooth. And then the other side, you can see that little bit grainier texture to the file. And so that's the file I would start with for shortening. So um, again, you can move either your finger, just place the tip in the center of the file and either move your finger side to side or move the file side to side. So you'll just want to keep doing that until you've got your nail shortened to the length you want it to. If you've got one side on an angle, then you just have to correct. And let's say I had 
well, let's make this crooked now just for the sake of having a crooked nail. So I'm higher on the one side, then I want to just make sure that I keep my file on the longest part of that nail and just maintain contact on the longest part of that nail until I even it back out. So the problem that we're going to run into as we're shortening is remember that the arch of my nail, the thickest part, was in the middle. The middle is no longer the middle. The middle is now the free edge, which means looking down the barrel of my nail, it's really, really thick. So we're going to take our file on a beveling angle to thin it out. So if this is flat on our finger, we would want to bevel our file until we get a thinning angle and then thin. You could also angle your file off the free edge and file this way, but when you're doing your own nails, I find it's actually easier to maintain this angle with my file. So we're just gonna file on that free edge until we've got that product thinned out nicely. Now that I've got this section beveled, it's looking a little lumpy right behind it. So instead of focusing on the very tip of my nail, I'm going to focus that little bit back and thin my nail out in that next area. And so as I'm filing up and down the nail, I just keep rocking my file around my finger. And the more we can rock our file as we're shortening, I kind of move both hands at once, but the smoother our finish will be. This is where it could be advantageous to have a buffing block, and when you press into the buffing block, the nail sinks into the foam and then that foam is much more forgiving than a hard file and that can smooth out that last little bit of lumps and bumps in the nail. So then any other free edge shaping, um, I like to use more the smoother side, the softer side when I am doing any final shaping because this is just a little bit of filing, it's not a lot of filing. In general, you're going to want to look to your side view and just keep your file nice and flat as you file that edge. Sometimes as our nails are growing out, we develop little catchies on them. That's another time that we want to just use our file to smooth any little catchy spots out and not pick at it because picking is going to make it worse and our nails are going to fall apart much faster. If we just keep filing instead of picking, then we can essentially grow our nails right out just through growing and shortening and growing and shortening. At this point, we could just apply a coat of polish over top and then in a few weeks, we could shorten again bevel again to thin them out a little bit more and reapply polish. Now if you have spots that are starting to lift that is going to present a problem because moisture can get under there and bacteria can start to grow. So the goal is to start shortening and beveling your nails before they start to deteriorate and, and lift at the back. Putting that clear coat of polish on will seal them a little bit. I recommend just regular nail polish that's easy to apply and remove as opposed to going with some sort of a gel polish which cures on because then you have to file that off um, unless you're going to soak your hands in acetone which does all kinds of damaging things to the skin so I don't recommend that. Nail polish is just the easiest to apply and remove, apply and remove. Now I wouldn't recommend filing all the product off down to the natural nail because gel bonds to the natural nail and if by the time we file all the product off, all that's left is our natural nail minus the layer the product was bonded to. So the longer that we can keep that product on there and protect the part that has been previously bonded to and just assist it in growing out, 
the better our nails will be in the long run. Typically, as we shorten our nail, it starts to become a little bit wider looking because when we shape them, we kind of taper the edge a bit. So easiest way I can explain tapering that free edge without over tapering or getting a weird angle is to just use your finger as the guide. And so keep your file on the outside of your finger and use your finger to guide that file around and that will start to taper that width in. So now it looks like it's kind of almost pointing that away because this side's tapered and this side isn't. So I'll just bring my file on the outside of my finger. The finger's the guide, the contact is right on the tip of that product. And again, just rocking around the side of my finger, keeping my file on my product until I've got it tapered nicely. Now if you've shortened your nail and tapered it and you don't hate the thickness of the free edge, you don't have to do the beveling of that free edge um, and filing on the top. You could just leave it shiny and then you can take um, a clear nail polish and either paint over the ones that you have beveled and potentially buffed. So I always recommend apply your product pretty much where your nail is grown out and then slide your brush back into the cuticle to the middle of the nail and down the sides. The advantage for those that have French nails at this point is that from an arm's length away, they're still going to look really good as we're growing them out. If there's color, you might want to consider buff all the color off, um, but depending on what's underneath the color, if it's not over clear nails, it may not look as good. Uh, the other advantage is that we can see if there is a lifted areas on our nails, we can see if anything funky is happening under there. So as long as it looks clean, we can leave that little bit of separated product and just put nail polish over it. But if it starts to discolor at all, then we're going to want to file that away. And that's going to mean taking your file and thinning that product out until you've buffed all the product down to the natural nail so that what is left on the nail is sealed and nothing is growing underneath and then we can apply clear polish over that again. But what if it's too late and we already have lifted product? Well, then we're going to have to take our file and blend that product away until we get the lifted area gone. So using the grittier side of your file, keep your file on the product. Try to make sure your nail file isn't hitting your natural nail. And this is just going to be a long, painful process of thinning that product out to get down to that lifted area. I say long, painful process because without using a nail machine, it just takes so much longer. But it is what it is. I just keep changing my view file from the side file looking at the top. It's best if you can keep looking at it so that your file isn't contacting spots you don't want your file to hit. Like I just kind of hit the corner of my natural nail there, which will file away a lot faster than gel because it's a lot thinner. And so little by little I can see that I'm getting to that lifted area and I just keep watching, keep wiping the dust away with my hand and then just keep making sure that my file is on the product and not on my nail. And little by little, I'm getting that lifted spot out of there. And you'll feel it when it gets, when that product is thinning out and you're hitting natural nail, you're definitely going to feel the file and we don't want to be feeling the file because that means we're filing on our nail and not the product. So 
So as I get closer to getting that product out of the way, getting that product filed off and I'm getting more natural nail exposed in that lifted area, then I just start slowing down and being a little bit more deliberate. So this is why I strongly urge everyone to shorten and polish long before we get to this point because when you get to this point the growing out process gets harder but still just resist the urge to pick because picking is just going to cause that product to lift even more and it'll cause product that is not currently lifted to start lifting. Just really gently and slowly filing right at the spot, keeping my pressure right where that product is lifted but making sure my file stays on the product and not on my nail. Now I'm just going to blend that because it's quite a flat spot there now. Now I want to start blending that so that it blends in with the curve of the rest of the nail. And I can finish with a buffer. And again, back to clear polish. And it may take a few coats of polish to seal that in nicely. Now I've got a real dipsy doodle dent there, but to keep the rest of my nail protected, I want to leave that. But I have reduced the size of the cave, so to speak, that separated spot, reduced that so that there's less area for any bacteria to start to grow, as well as sealed it with a nice clear coat of polish. Okay, only seven more to go. So, extremely important to try to get to maintaining our nails, shortening them, and getting a clear coat of polish on there uh, before they start getting tip heavy and lifting. A few additional products that I would like to share with you are Nail Innovations Thymol. This is an antiseptic solution that we generally use throughout the nail service if somebody has a nick or a paper cut, a little bit of redness in the tissue. Redness usually means that something is infected. And so in that event, when we recognize that pink skin, then we can use Thymol antiseptic and apply it throughout the nail service but it's also something that we recommend everybody has in their medicine cabinet because if you've ever pulled your finger away from your nail a little bit, then there's now a little port of entry and that opening bacteria can get in. So really important that we have something like this on hand. Also important if we have separation and lifts in our nails as we saw in the video, Thymol is a product that can be applied to that nail, just a few drops so that it seeps underneath any lifted areas and let it dry. After it dries, you can follow up with a clear coat of polish. Additionally, uh, Alpermed Poto Expert Cream Foam. And so this is a product that's made in Germany. I've used it for over 15 years. Outstanding product. And this is a product that I would not want to be without right now because it has Barrio Expert Lipo2 technology. So Barrio uh, or Barrier Cream means that when we put this cream on, it's going to prevent bacteria, viruses, fungal spores from getting into any cuts or cracks in our skin. And that's important because if we're washing our hands a whole bunch, there's a chance that our hands could crack. However, it also has the Lipo2 technology. And what that means is that it helps the skin to hold water. And that is essential for the skin to be able to repair and heal itself. So every time we wash our hands, we should be using a cream foam after. Wash and foam. 
wash, and foam. Foams have a much better absorbency into our skin than regular hand creams do. So check that out as well in the list of products above. Now, if there's anything in this how-to video that we haven't covered that you're coming across, feel free to reach out to your nail tech for further advice and insights, or you can email us or reach out to us on social media. Thank you so much for joining us today. We greatly appreciate you sticking with us. and We want to do everything that we can to assist you through this time. Until next time, stay well. Run.